Can you turn down the light a little, please? Perfect. So, um, hello, everybody. My name is Marcus. Uh, I'm, you can best reach me by email. I have to think about GitHub for another two months and so forth. And Twitter, or all these things. Um, I work for a big company whose name I won't mention in uh, the recording. You can ask me who that is. And uh, I started about a year ago to convince my superiors um, to endeavor uh, the possibility to distribute software not the way we've done it before, or we do it, we've done it before, but by using peer-to-peer -peer technology. So, this was granted, and since then, I learned how to combine peer-to-peer -peer with SALT, and I hope to find your attention. Uh, speaking of you, who has used SALT for more than half a year regularly? This is about five out of, one, two, three, five out of, I think it's about ten, let's say it's one, four, six, seven. 12. Let's say 12 is 10. F four people have used it for more ha than half a year. So half of you are not really deep sorters. Um, who of you uses more than 50 minions? One. Thank you. Uh, are your minions two? Are your minions agent or agent less? A agents, they have agents, they have agents, and who uses an agent less minion? Or the age, salt SSH or something? Or? Yeah, nearly two, okay, I, I don't, so. Um, uh, you are aware what, it, or those of you who use salt, you are aware of, of the execution modules, how to write them, of course, we've seen it today. Uh, who has actually Windows minions? This is exactly one person. I knew it. Uh, so here I stop. So uh, most of you use salt for Unix. I'm, I, I don't. I have it only on the salt master. And um, it works good. Uh, there are strange things which are there are always strange things. Um, it works, so salt works on Windows, so you should try it. Who uses salt for, the, for an Apple minion? Again, one person, okay. Who of you uses, this is just for curiosity, who has used RAID so far? Right, exactly nobody. Me neither, I haven't used RAID so far. Um, on one of the slides I will come back to the RAID question. Um, so, as I said, I distribute software. Who of you distribute software to end-user workstations or laptops? Kind of two, kind of three. Retail? Retail? What does that mean? What? Uh, point of sales or... Okay. Yeah, yeah, I see. Well, yes, that's also... And how big is your the software library you have to deploy? Like, hundreds of megabytes? Yeah, not too big, not, not, exaggeratedly, not exaggeratedly big. Well, I can just talk for, uh, for our customers. We have requests for distributing large files, like videos for the right. um, digital signage or price list updates or so. So yeah, we have that request. So far we haven't solved it with salt yet, but we could. Yeah, okay. The big files, in fact, this talk is about big files. Also this talk is about that we, in this company, we have a very distributed, in, in the last parts of Germany and outside of Germany, mostly Germany. Um, and the problems with this large distribution is that many, many of these networks are weak. So when you are working in data centers, or I haven't asked, who of you works in a data center then? Uh, 
Again, only one person. A person. Okay, good. Um, so I have to live with networks which are as bad as 10 megabits per second or even worse. And they are not really reliable and many, many people need these slow connections. So most of the time the networks are extremely full. And then we need to, to distribute big software and this obviously is a problem. The fun part is also some of these very bad locations shut down at night. So you, you cannot transfer it overnight. And all silly things happened, um, including sending USB sticks before. Uh, yeah, um, very recently, like yesterday, uh, there are now 700 minions running. So this is the current situation, sorry. This is the current situation. I wanted to show my wonderful t-shirt, so I stood here and... Uh, uh. So this is the situation for the customer. He is aware that whenever he has a new software, he will wait for one day because we have to set up the mirrors. Mirrors meaning servers, copies of the, the copies of the repository spread out. Um, when we think outside of Germany, there are around a thousand mirrors. Uh, then, if it's a big software, he's or the customers used to wait for five weeks. Big customer, big, big software starts at 200 megabyte. He's also used to pay if it has to be quicker. Uh, and he's also used to pay if it's bigger than one gigabyte and really pay a lot. Generally, you cannot transfer with the current system software which is bigger than one gigabyte, which happens. Um, what I want to achieve is to get rid of all the mirrors. If the software is already at some workstations, it's enough to transfer it from there. I don't have a... I, ah, I can walk. Um, so if it's already on one client, it's enough to copy it to the others. This should be one location. And we don't no longer want to distribute the same thing four times to four workstations in a location. It should be enough to transfer it once and have the location find the optimum. And if that location is in fact nearer to another location, the second one should not even ask for the central repository, which could be more distant, network-wise. So that's the idea. Um, and as slogan, I thought, here we treat software as if, if, is it, if it would be, if it, as if it would be a material like gold or metal we would have to transport each time from a warehouse to the destination. Whereas software really is information which can be retransmit once I have it. Um, I, I do this so explicit because it's, it's not very complicated, but we have a very deep mindset about how to distribute software. And in fact, I think all of you. Um, I today learned about theft. I'm not sure how theft works or theft notes works, but maybe we can, you, you can tell me. Um, what I here have is a distributed database, kind of, a repository, a, a distributed repository of software, and let's assume I only want the same software, then I don't need it to copy it again from the original source. There is this one very good software already invented, which is called peer-to-peer -peer BitTorrent protocol, which has been adopted by, um, this was a Dutch company doing it in 2008, um, and they had around 7,000 workstations in that university, which earlier they needed four days to um, distribute and install all of them. And uh, with a peer-to-peer -peer approach, you can get rid of all these 20 mirrors, they call them distribution servers, and do it in four hours. 
Nice. Success. And so somehow this company then bankrupted or defaulted, as I think it's in English. Uh, Twitter has published that they can now update their worldwide 10,000 servers in 12 seconds and no longer in 15 minutes with peer-to-peer -peer technology. Good. Facebook, same thing, incredibly one minute for a worldwide distribution of software. You, you could not possibly send the same thing 10,000 times from one location. Um, this is all good news and it is an established technology and the question is, why only Microsoft continues? So why is Microsoft better than the rest of the world? Do you have any idea or can you suggest me any? Yes? Sites have problems with using peer-to-peer -peer technology due to firewalls and monitoring of firewall behavior and this leads um, admins or policies sites to be very fearful of BitTorrent. Um, particularly in academic circles, there's a very deep distrust of PhD students and what they might be doing with BitTorrent. Uh -huh. Okay, yes. Uh, interesting, good. Then one has to take that into account. Uh, in fact, that's a valid answer, thank you. Um, lucky for, luckily for me, no firewall so far in the world of that company has any objections against peer-to-peer -peer traffic. And, um, yeah. Let's continue. I will give a live demo now, but uh, I, I let you choose. Uh, first, to see the live demo, or, or how, how did uh, uh, the um, implementation or the integration of peer-to-peer -peer with SALT? What, what do you want to see first? Uh, the demo or the theory? Who is for demo? Uh, and who is for theory? More, yes, I, I knew, I anticipated that. That's because and so the theory slides are in front of the live demo. Um, so we've seen some YAML before. Uh, again, this is YAML in the top file. I choose the top file because once I had the Python, which I show you on slide three, it was the most easiest to put it into the top file. Maybe you could write a state module but as I'm just a simple mind, it, the top file works, and you, we, you, you can tell me if it's better to put it into a state. So what you see here is we have the base configuration, a particular machine, and this is of course a long list of machines. Um, we scrap every peer-to-peer -peer file or a peer-to-peer -peer payload, uh, except, uh, no, in fact, I. I first give the command to, to delete every uh, payload which isn't on a list, which I will show you shortly, and then I will put two payloads on that machine. This is how the, the top file looks. First, delete everything and then, or make sure only these two files, which are named in that state, exist, and then put these two. These two. What does that mean? Let's have a look. Um, when I say delete everything except these ones for that machine, I have a peer-to-peer -peer function, which does exactly the same. It deletes everything which is, which is not on that list. So the idea is at one day I could even send, I, I, I could shorten the list and then that would be deleted. So I don't tell what has to be deleted. I tell what has to be there, which is, I don't want to say it, idempotent. What we've heard, idempotent, so often today. The idea of idempotent. Um, then when I want to say that this particular file or payload, in this case it's a file, but it could also be a directory, need to be transferred by peer-to-peer. -peer. I need to give three more informations apart from the name. I, give to, I have to give three information. The name of the thing, 
the info hash, which is the MD5 checksum, and all the IP of the other clients which already have it or are supposed to have it. They may not be they may not have it completely. It's, it's enough if they have a part of it. And then peer-to-peer -peer is smart enough to get what you need. So this is a question so far? No, good. And then simply you have to implement the, the, the Python uh, functions. Here you, you, you call any peer-to-peer -peer library you want. Um, this works very good. And uh, I, I also found it ele elegant that these functions instantly return. So it's not, this command does not keep on running as long as it's not finished. It instantly returns with the percentage or with an error. So all these functions instantly returned. I, I found this useful. So now let's switch to the demo. I have a web interface. And I have uh, the Unix shell on my master, where a, a kind of a loop runs, uh, which I call dispatcher. So let's insert, so this this payload, which is 500 megabyte of static nonsense, just 500, pure 500 megabyte data. Let's add four or five more clients to these 30s, which already have it. I have to choose add. And now these five clients have been added. As you see, in the same moment, something happens and Salt is called with the list of these minions and executes a high state. Why a high state? Because I have manipulated the top file. So the top file tells just one thing. It has only one purpose, to distribute files. I create the top file and the states dynamically. So this routine here uh, creates a top file dynamically. Maybe that's very silly, uh, but it works. So every 30 seconds the command is executed again. So the first time it executes it will just report us that it has received it for the first time. Nothing has been distributed, of course. Oh, now we have a very... Hmm. I didn't thought... I, will, I, I can make that a little bit smaller without hurting your eyes, I think. So let's put that on. Change settings. Appearance. A little bit smaller. It's good. So what we see here is that these files have been added. And what you see here is an error. They should not been they should not been added more than once, so I apologize. I stop this loop and I have to manually create payload and the top file again. I don't know why that happens. And continue with my stupid loop. Beauty of live demo. Um, so what we what we do for from a salt perspective is issuing high state, and if if we have set up a top file and all the SLS correctly, which we in this case didn't, then it's been done just by calling the high state. So in the background, all these minions have been, are trying to reach each other. 30 of them already have, in, and that list, this, that list of IPs here um, includes, of course, uh, the 30 
minions which already have the files and they are being contacted by the newcomers. And so they exchanged these files. So, including that glitch, um, the systems were the, the system works reliably. I see. So we have in fact distributed a number of uh, customer software with it. So, what's not called static really is client data. So we distribute mainly. Um, GIS software. Um, GIS means ge geo maps. Um, maps are big, so these things are bigger than 10 gigabyte. And um, either they are transferred with a USB sticks or with this system. So this is preferable. Um, now we can admire the velocity. It's It's not a very high velocity. I have um, ch chosen a very low transport rate for security reasons. Um, but I, what, I, what I found is that the peer-to-peer -peer technology, once it can pass, the firewall works very reliably. So, this, so, so much for the live demo. You have now also seen the two commands which need to be executed, which in fact isn't bad, I should have shown them anyhow. First, the payload SLS, the state file, must be created and the top file must be kept actual. <coughs> Somehow I wrote something bad. Mm. Ah, live demo. So, we can wait for the um, numbers to come to a hundred or you can believe me and I won't even ask you. Um, what I've done for you is to execute a command that, sync, that puts all the necessary software for the peer-to-peer -peer client on the minions. I measured how long it takes to verify that all exists and it's about three seconds. So, for all attached minions, the response of is my client updated takes three seconds in, on average. It even goes, no, it takes, sorry, 14 seconds on average. Uh, the best time is three seconds. These are the three seconds, which is best. It has a good average of 15 seconds. I'm happy with 15 seconds and then all these minions which are late, they may be late for a reason. I don't care. Um, but this was the day when I was very happy. So I, I had 70 clients. They were all, up to, they were all responding to me in, seven, in 15 seconds on average. Life was good. In fact, even the more minions the less time in, on average it took. So I thought, wow, salt is really scaling. I'm excited. And then, then yesterday, the 700 minions came and I very, um, in, in short time, continued the diagram. So here are the 70, which, which we just saw and what I would have hoped and expected was it continues our very great average of 15 seconds. It did not. So for some reason, which I'm not able to find out since yesterday, it, it, it now takes a high amount of time. The more minions I use or I, I, I probe. In fact, I have a very steep slope now. I had only two seconds to ask Tom why that is and he just asked me which version. I'm, I'm using a rather old version of Salt that's 2015.5 and um, he suggested to use a version which, where this behavior is known and fixed. I will do that but I, I wanted also at this occasion to ask you, have you experienced, you, you all see that your 
minions re return very, very fast, and some of them slower. Have you seen something like this before, or do you see no growth in response time with higher numbers of minions? Joe again. Yeah, there's no easy answer. You have to really look at um, different kinds of problems. So if you run out of memory on the server, for example, this can easily explain those things. If, uh -huh. if the machine starts swapping out, for example, yeah, yeah, yeah. or if your network gets so saturated that um, the server thinks I'm confronted with a soon flood and, and you know some of the protection yeah. kicks in. Um, good, good answers. Uh, what, what you can always do is, um, Batching. So if you yeah. just switch on batching and do 10 at a time or 50 at a time, yeah. you won't have the instantaneous right. anymore, but you will be sure that those right. batches, if the server can handle 50, yeah. it will handle 100 and 1,000, it right. will just do In batches. 50, 50, 50, 50. Right. Yeah. Um, oh, um, David? Yeah, uh, Salt could handle 700 very easily. Um, there's, there's, like you, like uh, Joey was saying, there's um, when you start getting into the you know thousands, there's a few things to look at. One, your you know your the performance of your master. Um, you know if you're if you're on a smaller server with a, a gigabyte of RAM, you know you might have to bump that up. Um, right. There's a lot of uh, uh, settings in your master config file where you can tune it to deal with the large amount of masters and that type of thing, um, and. You know, I've worked with a lot of customers sites where having four or five thousand servers is really quite simple. Good. So, um, yeah, 700 should be fine. In so fact, so take this way. as a mistake I made. Um, but I would share, I would like to share um, then the findings again. So in some form of community and say, okay, th these, the, the, be the better results then should be published and we should think of a way how to do that. And also, if you see that, look at that, so some kind of how you recognize a problem and how you resolve it. Uh, but in fact, I, I would expect that we can continue unto 100 minions without any slope in response time. Um, thank you. On the peer-to-peer uh, -peer part of the presentation, uh, who of you, uh, well, the skeptical, problems we already had. So this would be um, universities not wanting to allow peer-to-peer, -peer, um, the peer-to-peer -peer protocol in itself. Um, who would be interested or who would want to, would like to know more or um, stay in contact or uh, have it? Um, yeah, good. maybe as a background one of the retail customers we had um, actually was thinking about that uh -huh. back when it wasn't BitTorrent but eDunkey was the tool yep. of the day um, it's usually those projects are usually stopped for those reasons that Owen mentioned that people have you know kind of this fear of peer-to-peer um, -peer networks but I know that some of the hosting providers like Hetzner, for example, have been using an rsync based mechanism that works very similar for years, where basically, you know, you see the machine and then other machines would just rsync from their peers. Um, um, and and that, that, that has worked well. Interesting. The other alternative that you have in a, in a very um, homogeneous network is, is broadcasting. So that's what we do for, if you have a, like a whole um, let's say a, a department store with 50 cash registers, then you can just do a multicast. Yeah. Um, so you can, the cool thing is that then you can do like all the machines in 12 seconds yep. at the same time because on the wire it's really just one broadcast. But That's, that wouldn't work even in a distributed. It, it wouldn't program. work for these laptops which can go online and offline each second of the day and then reconnect. And in fact, we, uh, the, the company has very bad experiences with broadcasting. But it depends on the circumstances. Um, thank you for your attention. I'm one minute over the time. Now the party begins. No, um, uh, you can, you can, we, we stay in contact right now. Um, we have a look at uh, this continued until 99% and it's not report, 100 is never reported. 
Um, no, really, it's not. Um, it's not a joke. It always, it only reports uh, salt-wise, it's like it returns it false. What we learned today from Tom is that you have this dictionary which can return the, the result, which is only represented when it's false. So the, the, the um, 99% is something which is wrong. 100% on the other hand is something which is correct and that's therefore it's not reported. So, um, any more questions? Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>